Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in our report, we're here in the Canary Islands to investigate what impact volcanoes have on our climate. Volcanoes stop and we don't. We, we emit every year, every month, every day. Let's start with the very latest data for last month from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. On a global scale, December 2021 was 0 0.3 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average, making it the sixth warmest December on record. Here in Europe, there was a striking contrast in temperatures. And you can see that on this graph that Western and Southern Europe were much warmer than average last month. So much so that Bala in the UK hit a new record high of 16.5 degrees on New Year's Eve. Then across Scandinavia, the Baltics and northern Russia, it was colder than average. Sweden had its first colder than average December since 2012. With 2021 behind us, we can now reveal on this graph how last year fits into the overall warming trend since 1970. You can see that 2021 was one of the seven warmest on record, but was cooler than recent years. Now, to our report, looking at the impact of volcanoes on our climate. We're asking, do the gases thrown out by these mountains of fire have a long-term impact on our atmosphere? So last month, with the volcano eruption in La Palma underway, we set off for the Canary Islands to investigate. This country road on the edge of the security zone around the La Palma volcano is the perfect vantage point for volcanologists Anna pardo Cofladis and Catherine Heyer. They've been measuring the quantities of sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide and other gases emitted since the eruption began in September. We have the lower bands that are just degassing, so the white plumes are mainly water vapour. The gases come from the magma, so as long as there's magma down there, there's emission of gases. The gases have been less of a problem for the people of La Palma than the lava and ash. 3,000 buildings have been destroyed by lava flows and the fine ash is just everywhere. We can have structural damage to buildings. We can also get damage to electrical subsystems because the ash is often charged. We also get acid rain. So around in the local area, we've had real problems with both ashfall and acid rain that's been affecting the banana plantations. The acid rain is caused by sulfur dioxide, a highly reactive gas emitted by the volcano. This animation shows how it spread well beyond La Palma during the eruption. The SO2 can reduce air quality and in major eruptions it forms tiny particles that can have a short-term cooling effect on the climate. But what about the carbon dioxide from the volcano? How significant is the greenhouse gas emission from La Palma? On the island of Tenerife, scientist Omar Garcia spotted a spike in CO2 during the eruption. Carbon dioxide concentrations have increased very significantly, but it should also be emphasised that it has been very localised and over a very short period of time. At its peak, the volcano was emitting as much as 3,000 tonnes of CO2 per day. It may sound like a lot, but compared to human emissions, it's tiny. If we compare this value with, for example, the emissions produced by air transport, which account for 330,000 tonnes per day, the emissions from a volcano as small or medium sized as La Palma can account for one hundredth of the emissions from the aeronautical sector alone. It is absolutely negligible. In fact, the CO2 emitted by all the volcanoes worldwide combined is under 1% of the emissions from humans. The volcanoes have been around for longer than we have been, and climate change didn't start until the Industrial Revolution. So I don't think we can blame the volcanoes about this climate change. That's all we have time for. You can read more about climate change on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.